Hello and welcome to Royal Vibes. Megan lashes out at receiving no credit, all the blame in latest podcast. The Duchess of Sussex and her guest discuss the honors placed on women in public life, including how everything is women's responsibility, everything is women's fault in the latest installment of her podcast. So guys, before we get right into the story in full, please do ensure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Give the video a like as we get right into it. Meghan Markle spoke to actress Jamila Jamil, activist Shari Akdashlu, comedian Lana Glazer, and historian Lisa Trout Trout for, you know, the week's epic sort of archetypes, the women who all play roles in the world of activism, engaged in thought-provoking conversations about the judgments female activists face, delving into the ways in which men and women are treated differently, particularly in the digital age. During her conversation with Jamila, who is a passionate advocate of creating safe spaces on social media, the Duchess of Sussex hit out at the tendency of women to take all the blame. The Good Place actress spoke about how women are treated in the media and being inspired to make a stand after noticing a disproportionate focus on appearance when it came to female celebrities in comparison to their male counterparts, she said, I made it my business because I feel like a lot of women cancel themselves or retreat when they get pied onto and that's completely fair and understandable, but they start to be like, oh god, no one likes me, I should be quiet, oh god, no one likes me, I should go away. I won't take that job because I don't want to be too public facing that people don't blame me. I have to stay small, I have to go away because we are thought that the only thing important in our life is that we serve others and we are like and we are likable. And men just don't have to contend with this. Men are given space for redemption, I've said this before, but we can't give women the benefit of the doubt because we have spent it already on men. Everything is women's responsibility. Everything is women's fault. I mean, for sake. Megan added, no credit and all the blame. This idea for the honors always being placed on women is perhaps something the Duchess can personally relate to. When Megan and her husband Prince Harry announced their decision to step back from the royal family, the son plastered a, a pawn mantle across the front page Megxit. Within a few days, the term was being used everywhere. The global newspapers, social media, and even novelty gave in 2020 the Collins English Dictionary named it one of 2020's world, words of the year. You know, at face value, Megxit was just some clever wordplay used for a sensational headline as the shocking news unfolded. However, it pointed to an uh, uh, intrinsic and all by all accounts inaccurate implication that the Sussex's exit was solely Meghan's decision. The Duchess has was seen as the instigator of the departure, encouraging Harry away from his family. Is it Meghan's fault? It's hard to escape the conclusion that having grown up in a country that considers the Kennedys to be aristocracy, Meghan didn't understand that being a Windsor is not like being a celebrity. According to Virginia Blackburn in the Daily Express at the time, and just a few months ago, royal biographer Tom Berber claimed Meghan wanted number one status, but quickly discovered she would be better off in Hollywood. The author whose book Revenge, Meghan Harry and the War Between the Windsors was published this year told GB News that the book tells the truth about Meghan and I think that it's very important to know the background and the motivation of a woman who clearly married into the royal family because she loved Harry. I don't doubt that, but also because she likes the status. But in the end, very quickly, she discovered that she wasn't going to get the status of number one, which is what she wanted. There is only one number one in the royal family and the rest of the family is there to support the queen. Meghan did not understand why she was not in the spotlight and very quickly decided she would be better off in Hollywood. He slammed the Duchess of Sussex for her scandalous interview with Oprah Winfrey, claiming it was his reason for writing the book. Of course, the biographer was referring to Meghan and Harry's infamous tell-all, Oprah Winfrey, with Harry and Meghan, which aired in March 2021. During the two-hour-long program, the chat 
Show hosts address the magazine narrative by showing a barrage of headlines and TV interviews that blamed Meghan for that decision, a move that was said to have bothered the prince. He went on to stress that it was his choice to leave the monarchy rather than his wife's. Meghan explained further, he ultimately called it, he was like, we have got to find a way for us. She then thanked her husband, you made a decision that certainly saved my life and saved us all. Harry's unhappiness with his life as a royal first surfaced in 2020 when Omid Scobie and Caroline Doran published their book Finding Freedom. The Duke later confirmed it when, uh, confirmed it when appearing on the late, late show with James Corden in February 2021. Describing the situation as toxic, he said, I did what my husband and, uh, and, and what my father would do. I need to get my family out there. Speaking on a panel organized by World Magazine in November in that year, Harry dubbed the term Mexit as sexist. He said, maybe people know this and maybe they don't, but the term Mexit was or is a, a, a misogynistic term. And it was created by a troll, amplified by royal correspondence, and it grew and grew and grew into mainstream media. From the beginning of Harry and Meghan's relationship, the former Hollywood actress was subject to intense media and public scrutiny just a few months after the romance came to light. The prince was forced to issue an unprecedented statement expressing his concern for his new girlfriend's safety and calling out the racial undertones of comment pieces and the outright sexism and racism of social media trolls and web article comments. The couple have cited the media attention as part of their reason for stepping down during the conversation with James Corden. Harry explained that the British press obsession with his family was having a negative impact and it was destroying my mental health. I was like, this is toxic. Meghan and Harry now reside in the US with their two children, Archie and Lilibet. They have pursued their own interests outside the institution, including deals with Netflix and Spotify, philanthropic efforts and a multi-million pound book deal. When Oprah Winfrey asked Meghan if her story with Harry was a happy ending, she replied, greater than any fairy tale you have ever read. So guys, with that, we have come to an end of this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.